Hello, welcome to my DIY channel. Today I'm going to be looking at doing a natural gas conversion on this Champion generator. Purchased it refurbished on eBay, $650. It's an open frame hybrid, 5,000 watts. It's kind of cramped in here. Uh, this storage shed with some electrical components and a sub panel. Probably should have done this while it was still outside, but I've been traveling and I didn't want it to get stolen, so I'm going to have to work in cramped quarters. Anyway, the air box is here. Shouldn't have any problem getting to that. I know that there's other channels doing similar types of conversions. One of the things that I'm trying to do is get into a little bit more technical detail uh, and add information that may or may not be available in other places. Um, I wanted to discuss the idea of a dual fuel generator and I had a power land before. It worked for a while. It was set up supposedly as a tri-fuel product and eventually it wouldn't work with natural gas and I thought maybe the regulator had gone bad or the coil was weak or one of these things. So I worked on those areas and I was unsuccessful. What I finally determined is I think the compression is probably just too low. Natural gas has an equivalent octane rating of about 130 and it requires a higher compression to burn efficiently and work. Most of these um, lower cost generators have a compression ratio of about 8.2. They run about between 100 and 120 pounds, which is on the low end, uh, but it runs fine on gasoline. When you try and convert to natural gas, it runs, but it's certainly not very efficient. Now, obviously, you could shave the head, put a thinner gasket in there, um, get a custom piston. There's a lot of things you could do to raise the compression, but then, of course, you're putting more stress on the motor, and then you'd need high-octane gas to run in it. So, realistically, my conclusion was there's no such thing as a true dual fuel generator. It's just not feasible unless you got into some kind of custom valve timing and full electronic fuel injection that flip-flop back and forth between natural gas and gasoline. So that's really the first problem. Um, hopefully this will run, uh, but I recognize the fact that you're going to lose some horsepower on natural gas. Anyways, I just wanted to throw that out there because I don't think that it's something that's published and certainly the people that sell the conversion kits it's not something they want to talk about, um, but these normal generators with these lower compressions are very marginal at best with a gas conversion. So let's proceed and see what happens. Here's one kit. I'm going to be comparing two different kits with a different um, suction device. This is a motor snorkel kit. It's designed to go between the air box and the carburetor. It's very thin. So you don't need any stud extens extensions, and if you have an air box, it's right up next to the frame. In this case, we don't have that problem. This is designed to take up no more space than the factory gasket in there. I had the Century Fuel Products regulator already, so I just purchased their adjuster T and the motor snorkel. I think it was about $115. This product got an eBay, it's a Nash Fuels conversion kit. This is more of a traditional style Venturi. It's much thicker. It should fit just fine because I do have plenty of clearance between the frame and the air box. It does require the stud extensions. I like this adjuster tee, much cleaner. And it comes with a bracket. I also like this hose, really heavy duty, no problem with any abrasion. So the motor snorkel is mounted. It fit pretty good. It's got a little interference on the can here, the plastic housing for the air filter. So it's a little bit cocked sideways, but it looks like it cinched down and it'll be a pretty good fit. I think what I'm going to do is mount it right here on this bracket. It appears to be some type of probably California Air Resources board vapor tank. 
Anyways, this bracket's ideal. I'm going to put the regulator down here because it has to be mounted in an up direction and the outlet's on the top so then the hose can basically be put right into the top of it. Here I'll be using a center punch. It's a self-actuating center punch with a spring in it and it's got a pressure adjustment. Number 16 pilot drill through 1032 metal screws. They're a little atypical. They don't have a slot in them. You typically see for a self-threading screw, but they are tapered at the end. So if you get the whole size right, they go in pretty well. And then it's got a Torx head on it. Quick tech tip. I did remove the vapor canister so it's not sitting back there. I was afraid that when it finally went through the bracket, it would jump and go right through the canister itself. So I moved it out of the way. I center punched one hole, screwed it in, and I waited for the second hole. Now that it's on there, we can position our bracket. And that way the bracket's not moving around while you're trying to center punch the second hole. And it ends up in the correct place. I don't know if you can see it, there is a little center punch hole there. I'm gonna drill that one. And it's squealing like crazy, so I am wearing hearing protection and eye protection. And the regulator bracket's installed. No extra holes in the vapor canister. And the holes did line up. So the regulator's mounted. Hose is a little long. I just wrapped it around the bottom. May trim it. Just want to see if it's going to work. And this is the motor snorkel. I'm going to try that first and then we're going to move on to the other more conventional Nash fuel products. Venturi adapter. Hose was really tight. It's not going to need a hose clamp. It'll be just fine. And I use some non-petroleum silicone lube to get it on there. Otherwise known as Mercedes-Benz sunroof lube. I hooked up two heaters just for load testing. The eco throttle is on with no load. And both heaters are on full, so the load's probably about 2,500 watts, 2,600 watts. That's only about half of its rated capacity. I think that's enough. I'm going to take that snorkel off of there and go ahead and put the regular uh, Nash Fuel Venturi on. This is the Nash Fuels the Venturi. A lot of problems with the installation, but it is running both the heaters. Seems to be pretty precise. Something I just noticed on this Nash fuel system it looks like the um, threaded sleeve is one piece that they cut in half. Did not do a very good job of it. I think they'll work okay, but pretty poor craftsmanship on that regard. So, found a couple problems on the Nash fuel system. I commented before how I like the hose, it was pretty beefy. It's a good piece of hose. The problem is it's a 5 16 hose and the barb on the Venturi adapter is more like 3 8 So I had this uh, piece of 3 8 hose laying around, a piece of like fuel line. It fits on there really nicely and based on limited clearance behind the air box, I don't think this thicker hose, although it's a better hose, probably lasts longer, I don't think it's going to fit. And if I go up to the 3 8 size, it's even going to be larger, so I definitely don't think it's going to fit. There was a couple other problems with the mounting screws and the sleeves and so forth. So quite a few problems with the installation. As is these sleeves that are inside the air box. get pushed out when these are inserted, which is fine. They just take their place. 
problem you have is they end up sticking out in the front and then the nut won't screw all the way down tight against the plastic so I had to put a couple of copper oversized washers on there to get it to work plus these sleeves are so short these threaded couplers it's just kind of a mess. I'm going to try and get some full-sized ones. And the other big problem I see, if you look at the factory gasket, it's got these cutouts for the air vents. Likewise, the snorkel had them too. The Nash Fuels Venturi does not, so I probably need to drill those out to get the carburetor working properly. But as you saw in the video, it does run on natural gas with a Venturi. It's a little difficult to start. I was kind of disappointed in that. Of course, the other problem is once you put this device in there with the thickness, we don't have any problem with the frame interference, but it pushes it away from the carburetor such that the bottom mounting hole isn't up against the bracket, and now the screw is too short. So we need a longer screw, longer bolt, and a sleeve to take up the space so that it mounts straight and you can tighten it down. A couple of final comments. I'm going to get some better hardware for the Nash Fuel Venturi adapter and give it a try. The starting performance wasn't very good. I don't think that it has enough airflow on start you need to uh, prime it and to be fair I didn't have the uh, cover on the air box so any priming gas is just going to escape the area before you pull the cord um, you got to have the cover on prime it the gas will be trapped inside and it should start a lot easier ideally you could pull the cord and it would uh, draw its own gas in and start but I don't think that's going to happen and lastly I was looking at the wiring diagram on this 5,000 watt inverter. Turns out that it has two separate sets of coils uh, for each 120 volt side. So my estimation is they've got two, two, uh, excuse me, two 2,500 watt inverters that are out of phase by 180 degrees. That's how you get your 240. The reason that's important is because you've got two um, duplex outlets. Each one is on a separate inverter. So for example, if you went out to a job site and you used the um, 240 volt outlet with a neutral and hooked up a bunch of uh, gang boxes, some quads with GFIs, and you plugged a bunch of tools into one side and didn't balance the load, you'd find real quick that you're not getting 5,000 watts. And the reason is you have to balance the load if you're only using 120 volt tools or 120 volt load because each inverter is limited to 2500 watts you only get the full 5000 at the 240 or if you balance the loads between the two halves of the inverter